In this lesson, we will describe the devices that are used to control the flow of fluid to the various hydraulically operated services. The most common device used to control the flow of fluid is the non-return valve. This valve permits full flow in one direction, but blocks flow in the opposite direction, in a similar way to a diode in electrical circuits. This valve is also known as a check valve or non-reversible valve. In its simplest form, as shown here, the valve consists of a ball held in place by a lightly loaded spring. Fluid flowing in the direction of the arrow has no difficulty in overcoming the spring pressure and pushing the ball off its seat. However, if the fluid attempts to flow in the opposite direction, then it will force the ball onto its seat and form a seal. A restrictor valve, or choke, is designed to permit limited fluid flow in one direction and full flow in the other. As with the non-return valve, it is marked to assist with correct fitment. A solid arrow shows the direction of full flow, with a dotted arrow indicating restricted flow. When fluid is flowing in the direction of the restriction, the spring, assisted by fluid pressure, will push the valve onto its seat, closing the holes around its circumference, allowing fluid to flow only through the central orifice. When flowing in the opposite direction, fluid pressure will push the valve off its seat, allowing the fluid to flow through all holes. A restrictor valve is used to slow the operation of a service when either gravity, in the case for instance of gear lowering, or airflow in the case of flaps retracting, may cause that service to overspeed. The valve is always placed to restrict the flow of return fluid. If it was placed on the inlet side of the actuator, whose speed is being controlled, it would cause a pressure drop in the cylinder, leading to cavitation. This could cause damage to the actuator. You can operate the switch with your mouse to observe the operation of the restrictor valve as the gear moves up and down. The purpose of a selector valve is to direct fluid to the appropriate side of an actuator and to provide a return path for fluid displaced from the opposite side of that actuator. Here, we show a simple slide-operated selector being used to operate the landing gear. In our example, the selector valve is mechanically connected to the gear lever. However, it is sometimes convenient to locate a selector valve at a position remote from the crew compartment. To eliminate the need for extensive mechanical linkages, the selector may be operated electrically, either by an electric motor or a solenoid. Shuttle valves are often used in landing gear and brake systems to enable an alternate hydraulic system to operate the same actuators as the normal system. During normal operation, free flow is provided from the normal system to the service and the alternate line is blocked. If normal system pressure is lost and the alternate system is selected, alternate system pressure will move the shuttle valve across, blocking the normal line and allowing the alternate supply to operate the service. On many aircraft, the retractable landing gear is behind flush fitting doors when it is retracted. For aerodynamic reasons, some of these doors are also closed when the gear is extended. It is important that the correct sequence of door opening and closing happens when the gear is raised or lowered. Sequence valves are fitted in the landing gear hydraulic circuit to ensure this. There are two types of valve in common use, mechanically operated and hydraulically operated. The mechanical type of valve consists of a piston in a cylinder connected to a plunger with a spring pushing the piston in the closed direction. 
If this valve is being used in a gear down sequence, then the fluid will first be ported to the door. Fluid to the gear will be blocked by the piston. When the door is fully open, a striker connected to the door will push the plunger across, allowing fluid to flow to the gear actuator. A hydraulically operated sequence valve uses the change in hydraulic pressure as a service operates for its operation. In the diagram, hydraulic pressure in the supply line to the service being monitored is being felt on the bottom of the plunger. While the service is operating, this pressure will be low, allowing its spring to keep the plunger down. Fluid for the next service in the sequence is fed into the top of the valve, with its outlet port on the right. The spring, combined with the fluid pressure, will push the valve onto its seat, sealing the orifice. Once the first service reaches the end of its travel, pressure will now build up below the plunger. The plunger will move up, pushing the ball valve off its seat and allowing fluid to flow through to the next service. Modern jet aircraft are dependent on their hydraulic systems, not only for raising and lowering the landing gear, but for flight controls and many other services. For this reason, most aircraft use more than one hydraulic system, and in these systems, provision is made to fuse or block lines, particularly those in vulnerable areas, if a serious leak should occur. The devices used to do this are known as hydraulic fuses. Wheel brakes are normally protected by fuse units. Each individual brake unit will have a fuse. They are often co-located with the anti-skid modules in a safe area at the top of the wheel well. A modulator is used in conjunction with the anti-skid unit in a brake system. It allows full flow to the brake units on initial brake application and thereafter a restricted flow as controlled by the anti-skid unit. Anti-skid protection is discussed in detail in the wheel brakes lesson. That is the end of the lesson. Here is a recap of the components that we have covered. The non-return valve permits full flow in one direction, but blocks flow in the opposite direction, in a similar way to a diode in electrical circuits. This valve is also known as a check valve or non-reversible valve. A restrictor valve or choke is designed to permit limited fluid flow in one direction and full flow in the other direction. A selector valve is used to direct fluid to the appropriate side of an actuator or motor and to provide a return path for fluid displaced from the opposite side. A shuttle valve allows an alternate hydraulic system to operate a service. Sequence valves are fitted in the landing gear hydraulic circuit to ensure that the gear and doors open and close in the correct sequence. Hydraulic fuses block lines in vulnerable areas if a serious fluid leak should occur. And finally, a modulator is used in conjunction with the anti-skid unit in a brake system. It allows full flow to the brake units on initial brake application and thereafter a restricted flow as controlled by the anti-skid unit.